second round hook the disc bind to get the tractor ready for the baler tomorrow. Hopefully we're gonna bail. Time will tell. Tomorrow is Friday. But uh, before I do that, I wanted to bring it over here. I wanna pressure wash this thing off, get the worst of this stuff off. We got it washed off. It was very, very filthy. Probably as bad as it's ever been. I'm gonna start it up, let it run, sling some of that stuff off. I'm gonna set you guys up so you can see it. Uh, if you haven't been around disc bind, this will be a, a view you don't get to see too often because with the covers up, it's a little scary. <laughs> Try to get a haircut by one of these. All right, guys, it's Friday. It's about 10 o'clock. And uh, another very heavy dew. You can see my, my boots. However, it's about right for 10 right now. So, I plan on bailing it today, but there's still quite a bit of toughness in the hay. So I'm gonna tet it now so it can be drying and then uh, probably a couple hours after I tet it, I'll go ahead and rake it. See where I, the decision I gotta make is, am I gaining much by tetting it? Cause there will be some leaf loss. It won't be too bad cause it's pretty tough right now, but is it worth the leaf loss or should I just go ahead and rake it? This on the bottom is very, very tough. I mean, very tough. I'm almost thinking about just raking it. Boy, am I glad we don't have tire trouble here. Tire trouble sucks. I'm thankful all of our tires are 100% perfect and nothing leaks. Not. This tire leaks around the rim, and the rim basically this this rake was sitting for don't tell them how long, and it was sitting out in a fence row basically, and uh, the wheels on it were super rusty. We cleaned up the rim as good as we can, but I need to take the wheel the tire back off and, and clean again. It's a pretty slow leak, so once I air it up, it's good for a few days. So basically, each time I go to rake, I just air it up before I start. And you know, if I gotta rake a few different fields over a few days, I don't have to air it up anymore. So, all right, that's good. Let's uh, get to raking. We'll grab the drone and uh, see if I can get a little bit of bird's eye view for you guys raking as well. All right, we got the rake on. Head over here, 
You'll notice how wet the tires are. Out in the field, it's not as bad. Uh, but I want to rake it uh, while the leaves are still a little tough. But also, I want to rake it as early as possible so I can get as much drying time as I can in the windrow. Um, because there's just a lot of stuff with the tethers not really getting flipped up on top. It's doing a good job of fluffing and everything. It's really, it really, I mean, without the tether, this wouldn't be dry. It would still be soft and wet. Um, but, getting it flipped over. The way the tether's padding, kind of wind rolls it the second time through, which really is not all bad because that gives a bare spot for the rake to rake it to, so it's flipping everything over rather than flipping, you know, the middle material. I don't have a kicker wheel. So, <clears throat> the middle material, if it's a, just a big blanket, it won't get turned over, which is not good for drying. If it's already dry, it's not a big deal. The baler will pick it up. But. So, for anyone not familiar a kicker wheel is a set of wheels just like what's on the wings it goes in the middle and all it does is it just flips up the hay in the middle and it's usually out here in front and then after it flips that hay in the middle up then the wings come through and rake it together in a windrow that just ensures that you have the all the hay flipped up instead of just matted down on the ground it's really good for if you've tatted it and it's just one big blanket and you still need to flip that material up, then it flips 100% of the hay instead of just where the wings hit. So, but with the, the way it's tatting, it's working out pretty good for this rake. All right, I'm gonna get the drone. Let's get going.
All right, just finished raking. It is about 11, a little after 11, I think, maybe 10 after or so. Um, so we should get quite a bit of good drying time here. I'm gonna fly over the field real quick, and uh, if I got enough battery, and show you what it looks like raked. I got up, took a little bit of video, and then as soon as I got up there, I dropped the bar on my battery and it came back home, so. All right, guys, got the baler greased. Getting ready to hook the baler up to the tractor. I switched the PTO on the tractor. Uh, just checked the twine in the box, and this is what we got. So, we're gonna roll with it. So I'm gonna ask you if you live life on the edge, you probably don't think of this, but this is what I think of when I think of living life on the edge. All right, guys, we are getting ready to try a few bales here. Uh, I went ahead and flipped it with the rake uh, about an hour and a half ago to give it a little bit more drying time for that stuff on the bottom. It's just not quite really where I want it to be. Um, but I'm gonna try a few here, check it with the, the moisture sensor, moisture tester, and we'll see what we end up with. A little tap in there that I never did clean out. I was gonna go ahead and trip it. Let's roll. Where the hay is good, out here on this ridge, the opposite ridge over there, it's it's really it's good enough to bail. We're gonna go ahead and bail what I can, and then tomorrow, because they push the rain off a day, so tomorrow's Saturday. Tomorrow I'll come out and I'll flip the ends, I'll flip these pieces here, and we'll bail those tomorrow.
Ginge. Got my hay hauling dog. Just make a loop right, just make a loop there and pick those up and go right back where we came. Hey, I will. I'll uh, either tear that out tomorrow, let it dry and re-rake it, or I'll just flip it with the rake. Probably try flip, flipping it first. How we stack, we put five in a layer. So, across here, as we consider a layer, this here is considered a tier, just one block. There's five in a layer. So 5, 10, 15, when we finish this one, that'll be 20, and we alternate. So on the bottom one, we put one in the middle, two on each side, long ways, and then we start the one long ways here, sideways, sideways, long ways, sideways, sideways, long ways, and then on the top one, we'll do just like we do the bottom one, and then usually the very top, we'll tie, we'll put four on, and that'll tie everything together. And then, once I do that, I'll pull the very top one over, and that, that ties the tiers together. One of my little buddies in the bail. No guard snake. Come on, there we go. There he is. And bites the dust. We got just a few left. Here's the load. Two, three, four up there at the baler. Get these finished stacked, and I got two out here. This that one there's messed up. One back there. I'm gonna cut those bells and re-rake them and bail them. All right, we got it all loaded up on the trailer in the barn for the night. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna flip those windrows I left over. They'll get an extra day of drying time and uh, see if they can get dry enough to bail without having to worry about them. We're getting musty. We got uh, 130 bales is what I bailed. There's 125 on the trailer. I left three out there in the field. I'm gonna cut tomorrow, spread out, and there's one in the baler. 129, yeah. So, all right, not too bad. See you tomorrow, nighty night. Good morning. <clears throat> Actually, shouldn't say good morning good afternoon uh, ran some errands this morning i went ahead and flipped these wind rolls that we got left out here this morning i bypassed that i figured you guys have seen enough raking that's probably about the most boring part of the whole process we're gonna bail it here shortly because either way no matter what it's gonna be raining tonight into tomorrow so um not gonna have a bunch of wet hay laying out here. Uh, it's definitely dried some. It's, yeah, it's still wet down under there. <sighs> definitely not dry enough to not have issues with. I wanna flip these windrows over one more time. I just wanna give it every chance it can to get as dry as it possibly can. And at this point, the hay that's left out here, I'm not really worried about leaf loss because there's a lot of grass in with it. And so, you know, when you're faced with a decision between leaf loss and mold, you always choose leaf loss. Always. You never choose mold. If you it's about five o'clock. We are going to bail the rest of this. Then we're going to get it loaded up, which won't take long. And uh, we'll get it taken over to my dad's, put it in the barn. Um, it's probably dried a little bit. It's still way too wet. But from the tap that I did, I still have some preservative. Got me a pump sprayer right here. Are you hauling hay, Kay? You hauling hay? Little does he know, one day he'll be back here. Oh, look at that view. <clears throat> Stacking the rest of this hay. 
by myself. Should say by myself. My wife's driving. We had uh, 43 bales. Got all this at this end to get this last bit in this low spot. These are a little bit heavier than normal. When you're the one that has to throw them on, then climb up here and stack, then climb up here and throw more up here. And half of them up here I've thrown from the ground, but those were the little bit lighter ones. The super heavy ones I can't get up that high. Not quite what I used to be. And I'm not even that old. Hey Kate, anything to say to the camera? This is no, I'm looking at this beautiful hay. Looking at this beautiful hay, Dad. Oh yeah. Lift that up, show that belly. Show that belly. Cause I'd like to chew on some of that hay. I help it, but uh, you okay? You okay? Huh? No, he's not gonna make it. Sorry, I know. I couldn't help it though. Perfect opportunity. Getting ready to head out. Everything's strapped. Straps are tight. Hay is all on. Got the lights on. Tail lights work. Turn signals, both work. Ready to go. got home uh, ended up getting a load of hay to dad's too late to get it unloaded because the barn we're putting it in does not have electricity so we don't have lights there it's just a, a pain trying to do something when it's so dark you can't see what you're doing catch you guys in the morning I also forgot to mention too it started raining here just about a mile down the road on me so I'm glad I don't still have hay on the ground right now. All right, it's now Sunday afternoon. Headed over to my parents' house to get the trailer unloaded. Uh, it was raining this morning, rain last night. I, well, early this morning, uh, it was storm pretty decent. I got nine tenths of an inch of rain. I think Dad said he got three tenths. However. It's been kind of sprinkling throughout the day, and uh, Dad said it cleared up, and then I just told him I was headed over, and he said, it's pouring right now. Whoop, yeah. So Dad's calves he's got up here. Uh, they're thinking that I got treats for them. Got 30 bales here on the trailer that we called out and because they have just a slight amount of heat which any amount of heat is too much so we called them out the rest were all pretty good and uh see if i can get backed up to the kwanzaa building here it's a little soupy got some rain today obviously and we're going to throw them in here on a pallet and let them go through their cure and just see how, how musty they are and then they'll get end up getting fed to these calves here so they appreciate it don't you big boy yep checking the moisture on a few of these thirty four point six holy cow Please. that can't be right this is ninety nine point nine that's gotta be a screw up 40.3. The moisture's definitely gone up on these. 33.3. So that's one of the things about living where we live. The humidity, they actually pick up moisture after you bail them. Because none of them checked that high the day I bailed them. 
All right, I did put a couple spares in here, but I made it through without switching over. I was probably, probably had enough for another 30 to 40 bales. It is now Sunday night. I just got home, just got the trailer unhooked, just parked the truck in the shop here. We got it done. It was not a complete success. Um, we did have some high moisture hay. Uh, we made some good bales too, you know, but we had quite a few bales that were pretty high moisture. And uh, you saw I culled those out. We have 173 bales baled. There's one stuck in the chamber here. Normally I can pull them out when it's good dry hay. Uh, with it being higher moisture, I can't get that one out full. So uh, if I can bail some hay here pretty quick, I'll leave it in there. Otherwise, I'll cut it and pull it out of flake at a time. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this. I tried to get some actual aerial shots of stuff going on. I know this is just a small, you know, I'm a small time operation anyways, but this was just a tiny field. Uh, I was just nervous about getting too much on the ground not knowing what the weather was gonna do, not knowing if it was gonna dry. This ended up not really drying worth a crap. So it's probably good that I didn't cut more. However, this is probably the wettest field I had, but it needed to be cut the worst. So I don't know, you know, it's a gamble sometimes. You just gotta take what you can get. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed. Franklin County Forge out.